In this video, I will be reviewing the Nikon D5200. Five years ago, the Nikon D5200 came out as Nikon's entry to mid-level DSLR camera lineup. And you're wondering, how does it stand up to its competition in 2017 and 2018? With the 24 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor, aka crop sensor, with an ISO of 100 to 6400 F mount, a 3-inch fully articulated screen, especially good for vloggers, five frames per second continuous shooting and weighing in at 555 grams. You can now get the D5200 for around $500 with a 18 to 55 kit lens. So let's start about what I love about this camera. Besides this being my very first DSLR, it's a pretty darn good camera to start with if you're a complete noob. As long as you buy a good glass for this body you can get some pretty good shots with whether that you have good lighting and it can stand toe to toe with a lot of other DSLRs. Good range of color if you have a neutral profile set on it. There's some rolling shutter but it's not that big of an issue and surprisingly enough for the D5200 it does have some pretty darn good low light performance. It's very friendly user interface and one of the reasons that I got this camera was that not only that you can take videos with it, but you can also take photos. And Nikon is known for having its top of the game when it comes to photos. As for video capabilities, the Nikon D5200 does have and shoot by 1920 by 1080p in 24 frames per second. And let's talk about the downsides of using this camera. Because when it comes to entry level camera or having your first camera, you shouldn't go for the most expensive type of camera because you don't know how to use it. And when it comes to the downsides of the camera, just like a lot of the other entry to mid-level DSLRs in this lineup, there's no aperture control in live view. Slow motion you can only get in 720p, meaning you'll have to upscale. There is also bad noise, especially with this model is that when it comes to autofocusing and continuing autofocus it's pretty darn bad and loud and it always has to constantly track so when i have to film vlogs or any type of video where i can't see whether or not i'm in focus i usually just set the focus once and then make sure not to move so if autofocus is a big thing for you i would not recommend this camera also, it has a decent buffer for photos, but if you're a photographer, I would much more recommend you get its big brother, which is the 5300 or the 5500. When it comes to ISO range and low light capabilities, although it does have a very good sensor and you can get away with having a fast lens, I usually don't shoot videos or photos above 1200 ISO. Even though it does say it goes up to 6400, anything above 1250 ISO, you can see a lot of grain and it does get really noisy. So does the Nikon D5200 still live up to its attractive price? I would say yes and no. It is definitely a good camera to start with if you're a total beginner and looking for a camera that's within a budget friendly price and you would be amazed at what it can do. But if you're more along the lines of a videographer and an intermediate or advanced with a bigger budget, looking for a better autofocus, better low light performance and a better battery, I would much recommend its older brother, the 55. 500 because the 52 or the 5300 are essentially the same cameras except without a touch screen and the only difference if you do decide to get it, its very latest model the d5600 is that it has bluetooth and nfc capabilities but its overall sensor size is almost the same as the d5500 one of the reasons why i decided to review this camera is because it's just to prove that gear should not matter as long as it shoots in 1080p and has a decent sensor size, you can do a lot of incredible things and never let you know your money 
stop you from making videos. The, who this camera is for is that you want to get into video and photography. And if you're more leaning towards the photography side and you want a little bit of video, this is the camera for you. This is the camera to start with. And this camera will always have a soft spot in my books. And my name is Peter and you're watching Broke Visionary where you can create something from nothing.